in retrospect, uh, do you do you regret the decision to join Get Up? No, no, that decision uh, was good for my bank account. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Fair but also, enough. like, look, what what we signed up to do under John Skipper, Greedy, and I, and everybody else that picked up and moved back to New York or to New York was very much like a show that we all wanted to do. And then, you know, and then people leave, things get changed, other people come into it in charge and it becomes something else. And so that's okay. The studio was beautiful. I love living in New York more than I've ever loved anywhere else. It was great to be able to do everything in one spot, but when things sort of change behind the scenes and you, you can remove yourself, like why be miserable? There's, mm. there's no point. Life's too short. So you had that uh, somewhat infamous moment where you said you don't watch football. <laughs> yeah. I was always wondering if you said that to try to get off the show. No, because you want to know why I didn't think anything of it. I had been saying that on Sports Nation for oh. like two years before. And then I thought, wow, no one's actually listening to anything I say. That's humbling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was because if you really, I mean, look, if you think back to what I said, how it was really not that big a deal, but there's such a, and, and also who gives a damn? Like if this one chick on TV doesn't want to watch football, A, doesn't mean I still don't know what's going on probably more so than some people who claim to watch every week and B and we're supposed to all be different. We're supposed to all have different opinions. I, at the time represented a certain amount of humans that felt the same way I did that some of the issues that the NFL chose to address and not address were insulting to groups of us. And so that's how I felt. I felt angry and that's okay. When you love something or you're a fan of something like we all are for sports, you're allowed to be hurt, offended, angry. That's part of it. Otherwise, we're just mindless robots. And, you know, that doesn't sound like a fun way to live anyway. So, yeah, I had no idea because I had already said that before in my life that that was going to resonate the way that it did. I mean, to this day, people are, like, are, you, are you watching football? I'm like, holy crap. Like, how is that the one thing that everyone, man, you think you say some really smart things over the years and then you realize it just all came down to one sentence. <laughs> But I have to be honest, like I was shocked that that was such a big thing, uh, to your point, because it, it, if you kind of take it out of context, okay, it's a little bit shocky, but like, was that, was that ever told to you? No. You are being removed from this show, but it happened no. shortly thereafter, right? Yeah, it happened shortly thereafter and they kept changing things. And look, behind the scenes, now I, now I can talk about it all the time, but behind the scenes with Nick and everything, I, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. There are people that are in charge of the show that are ruining it and making it what it's not supposed They're making it in every other show. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, you have this amazing studio in this amazing location in the greatest city in the world. And we did all of this work and now you're just going to make it into whatever everything else is. And so that was kind of the thing. And, and already having NBA countdown anyways, it made it an easy sort of conversation. And look, let's not be, I, Norby Williamson is all too happy to get rid of me. And I'm all too happy to be out of his life and his out of mine. So that was easy. That was an easy, like, Hey, we want out. Can we get out? Boom, boom, done. <laughs> let's all move on with our lives um it's weird it's like i know this isn't a good lesson for kids like if you don't like something leave but also as a 46 year old who wants to enjoy life i that's where i am now if i don't like something i'm going to try to leave it or do something else fighting for it when you know you can't win is it's it's pointless do you ever watch the show now i've seen it a few times and i've heard from greenie uh, like greenie's a lovely man we, our personalities could not be more different. I am noxious and loud and he is not, he is, he is like a dream for hosting television because he doesn't get you in trouble. He's never going to, he's not going to say anything controversial, even if I never thought I said anything controversial. And so, yeah, he's, he's a good person. And I, I see it every once in a while. Like when I come in here, I'll, I'll have the TV on and it'll be muted. Um, but for the most part, to be honest, I don't watch a lot of talking head television. I watch games. Uh, I obviously will watch you know, Ernie Johnson and those guys, but that's, that's kind of it. Like, I think you, when you gave opinions for a living, whether people wanted to hear them or not, I don't really listen to other people's opinions. Do listen to a lot of Sirius XM radio. That's probably where I consume the most. So the, I feel like there's a little bit of revisionist history because I feel like some people now think that the end of your time at ESPN was with that show, but you still right. stuck around and you were a part of countdown and whatnot. Oh, yeah. What was it like afterwards? post get up when you were just doing countdown did you feel like your days were numbered in in your mind no i well not in that sense um because the show for the first time in its existence it'd be a countdown like we actually rated okay like we had some shows that were competing where as before it, it just wasn't um anyway it doesn't help that they change it every season but that, that is what it is and so 
No, I just, I, for me, it started um, the playoffs of my final season, whatever that was. And I'll never forget it because it was in Portland at the time. And I just, it was just ruined. Like the, the project that it was, the fun that it was, it was just ruined from just garbage that didn't need to be ruining anything actually at that point. And it, it, you know, I knew I was okay with that. And I knew Chauncey and I, like Paul, as serious as Paul can be, like we would talk about it, Jalen, you know, it was, I was very open about how I felt and the things that were happening and all that with them and with everyone on the show. But yeah, I just was sort of like, you know, I have a contract. If I can get out, we'll get out as long as I don't get screwed. And then I don't really care what happens after this, but we'll finish out the season and see what happens. <laughs> so what, 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 what was ruined? It was a, like, it's just such a, Television, you know, I hate cliches. Like, I hate the idea of like, well, whoa, television's a cutthroat industry and backstabbing. You know, and you're like, no, not really. I mean, I really never experienced much of that. It, I, like, sure, you have issues with certain individuals, but that you would have had that if you worked at a grocery store. Like, we just don't always have to like everybody, and they don't have to like us. But there are other things that start to happen, and and there's this sort of like, you know, people will use media. They will say things to media knowing that it will get printed, whether it be on the internet or in paper or whatever, that they know are not, it's not right. Um, but you find some, you find that one person who's willing to do it and you can put somebody in a bad light. You can paint me in a bad light. You can tell stories that aren't true to make yourself look better. And that's fine. That's everyone's prerogative if that's how you play. But when it's allowed to happen repeatedly, um, that didn't make sense to me because you hear you have this company, you've invested a ton of money in me. You'd think that at least while I'm there, you, you sort of have my back or publicly have my back or what have you. And that's just not how it works. And it's a, it's a bummer because I think what happens in those cases is less talented or less able people end up doing jobs because they played that kind of a game. And then you have a crappier product, but it is what it is. You do you feel it. like ESPN, the environment, do you feel like it fosters that kind of behavior? Do you feel like it, 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 it fosters that kind of insecurity, jealousy, backstabbing, being in the, you know, the ecosystem, as they call it, that is ESPN? Do you, <laughs> right. Do you feel like it fosters it? I mean, look, I've only ever worked, as far as that's concerned, like at NBC for a minute. And it was, mm -hmm. it was sort of a up and coming sports network at that point. It was not, it's nowhere close to what ESPN is. And so... I had so many good years at ESPN without anything. You know, we, I started in 09, did however many years, took a break and went back. Um, and it was great. And now look, whether things were happening, maybe I just didn't know about it or maybe it never came to me or I didn't hear about it. But I also never did a show that was as you know visible as NBA Countdown. And so that's probably part of it as well. There's just one job, that one hosting job is the only one that exists and people want it. And so they, I guess some people are just willing to do whatever it takes to get it. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird way to live. Like I, I, I sometimes think about like, should I have done this or should I have played the game or should I have gone to the media and leaked a bunch of BS and see what, but then I think what a, what a crappy way. Like I still have to go to bed at night. I still have to wake up tomorrow. I would feel awful if I knew that I made a lie about someone else and then that got spewed out. So I don't know. I'd rather have a clean conscience about it than, than have that job and feel gross and dirty. So officially, was your last uh, your last assignment for ESPN? Was it Game Six of the 2019 NBA Finals? Was it Raptors Warriors? Was yes. that the last time you were on air? Yes, that was it. When, when you signed off, did you know that was it? Yes, I knew. Yeah, you knew. I didn't. Really? I didn't know officially, but I knew that I we had behind like Dick and our people, or my people, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. We had already been like, all right, look. I'm technically had another year on my deal, but if there was a way, if there was a breach, if there was even a hint that like somehow my contract was going to get stepped on, then I had an out to get money and leave. Cause look, I can leave, but you leave without money. So wow. you need to like, you have to cover yourself. So I would have had to stay another year, but we, we got lucky. On that wow. Yeah. That is incredible. I've never heard of a deal like that before. Yeah. Cause if I would just you know, like, you can quit a job whenever you feel like it, but you don't get anything. Right. Like <laughs> they're like, okay, cool. Thanks for having me. But I didn't want to do that. Like, Look, the last thing I'm going to do is give let people keep money that I had signed on for. Like that's just not how it works. Like I'm a friendly person and decent to get along with, but I'm not I'm taking my money with me. <laughs> that's the one thing I draw the line at. So <laughs> there you go. Did they try to convince you to stay? Did anyone try to convince you to stay? At first, they were like, "Okay, well, you could, or you could just stay out the year." But it, it was it was broken. Like it was just a broken relationship because 
the garbage that was still going on, that, that was still going to go on. Uh, things had already been said about me publicly that weren't true, that nobody squashed or fixed. Or, and I never addressed any of it. And so it just sort of felt like I don't want to do anything at, for any of this. You know, Chauncey was leaving. Uh, I didn't know Paul was going to leave in the way that he left, but God, uh -huh. it couldn't have been more Paul. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, it's, it's a, again, like it's a, it was a brand new show a few months later, different people, different everything. And it, that's how it works. Just changes. Thank you for watching this portion of the Ariel Hawani show for the entire conversation. I do suggest you check it out. Click here.